In this video, we are going to see how you can test an application using virtual threads. Remember that when you are using virtual thread, monopolization and pinning can affect the application performance and memory usage. So my application is a very simple to-do app. It's the same application we have developed in the previous blog post and previous video, which just have the get, create, and so on. So uh, nothing very interesting here. It uses the run on virtual thread uh, annotation. So all those methods will run on virtual threads. My tests are as simple as a regular test I will do when I'm testing a RESTful uh, service. So I'm using REST Assured, calling endpoint, verifying that it's what I expect, and so on. So the first thing you will need to do is go to si inside your pom.xml and inside the Surfire plugin configuration to add this uh, parameter here, this system property, which will dump the stack trace if we are pinning a, uh, a carrier thread. So with this, I can come back here and run my test. And we should not see any uh, anything in the in in our test. We will see that. So all fine. No stack trace. Yes, no stack trace. Why? It's because the components we are using have been tailored to be uh, virtual thread friendly, like Hibernate, Nariana for transaction and so on. So we are not pinning. However, if at some point I just go back here and say, well, I'm doing something uh, uh, wrong, like I'm pinning the carrier thread. How to do that? Just having this code that take a look and block the thread. So this is clearly a pinning event. In that case, if I run my test again, we will have the stack trace dumped inside the console. There we go. You can see now uh, here that we have this stack trace here unpinned. And if you looked here, it's this place here. All right, that's great, but dumping inside uh, the log is not necessarily what you want. You may want to fail the test if this happens. So you integrate a library and boom, things start failing. You want to be aware that it's not virtual thread friendly. So we can remove this arg line. Oh, I need to reimport, so it's reload. And we can use um, an extension, a GUnit 5 extension, which is named Luminit. Where is this? Sorry, Where is that one here. Um, at the moment, it's a separate GUnit 5 extension that we are going to merge inside the Quarkus test extension in the very near future. Once you have added this one inside your class pass, you can go to your test and here add the at extend with Luminit and say should not pin. So the extend with will disappear as soon as it's integrated uh, within Quarkus test and should not pin just indicates that all the methods on this test case should not pin the carrier thread. You can also use this annotation uh, on the method level. So now if I do this, remember, I still have my, uh, uh, my pinning code. We should see at least one test failing. I think it's a, uh, Oh, maybe more. I can't remember where I put it. No, just one. Okay. So this one is failing and you can see that there is an assertion error. It was expected to not pin the carrier thread, but we collected one event and you have the stack trace of the event. So you can go back exactly at the same place and say, oh yes, here I'm pinning the carrier thread. And if I remove that call, where was that one here? And we run again, then our test R should be passing again. So you can also use uh, in my test uh, um, should pin or should not pin. And when you say should pin, you can also configure the number of uh, uh, pinning events you are expected inside this uh, method, because sometimes there is no choice. The library is pinning and you just want to say, OK, it's fine. It's not pinning for too long. All right, that's all we have for this video. Remember, pinning and monopolization are really uh, going to affect your application performance. So detecting pinning is really key. And we have seen that you can first dump the um, pinning event inside your console or use this small uh, GUnit 5 extension to actually fail the test when uh, they are pinning the carrier thread.